It is your Tuesday night fix for college football talk, for fun and laughter, for comedy, and of course for Florida State football. We got Jason Parker on the line from NBC Six. Logan Robinson, hopefully coming uh, to us very soon. There's a there's a pizza issue, I believe, with Logan and the gang tonight. Well, supposedly I asked him because he's babysitting for his younger brother, and I just said I hope that he gets some pizza. I hope his parents pay him in pizza or something. I think is that how how it goes? Well, I think that's a pretty reasonable expectation. That sure you you babysit for free when you do it for the family cause, but well, you can kick in for a little pizza. Sure. Nice. Now, if he doesn't show up, do I get credit for his appearance as well that I can stockpile for later? We'll have to rate the appearance first. We'll have to evaluate your performance. Okay. And and see. Sure, so right. it's again everybody out there the much ballyhooed and much controversial. Is Jason 63 for 63, or is he 62 for 63, or maybe most accurately, 62 for 62? I was not invited to one of them, so I'm 62 for 62. I'm perfect on every single one. The big Mike Norvell controversy um, in the moment live stream, the much controversial one. I would have dropped what I was doing. God knows it probably wasn't productive. <laughs> All right, folks, I got my Florida State colors on tonight. They almost match the banner below, but that is official. I want everyone to, to give me uh, credit after 63 shows. That is the official Florida State color. That is the color code of the Seminoles. Jason Parker, NBC6. Logan Robinson, hopefully on his way. Big James, Inc. big game, James Coleman. It only I I trip up on that at some point, typically en route to Jacksonville at this point. We'll see. It only took you a year and, and 11 weeks to get the colors right. I like that. Thank you. No, I, I was noting that I've always been correct on the colors. Uh, of course. We Last week, it wasn't noted by anyone, but we went with the um, the secondary colors. What would you call that? Is it a, um, like, well, it's a garnet and gold. It's, so it's the gold. We went with the gold for the banner for, I believe, the first time last week. Oh. I call this dangerous banter between Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football and Jason Barker, the guy with nothing else to do on a Tuesday night. <laughs> we, we could do that as well. With Look, you can Shout make their excuses. Well, All right. So we will be talking the West Virginia game and the possibilities there a little bit later because Logan's got his inside scoop. Jason is going to educate us on current uh, Florida state high school football rules. And a complete preview of the 2020 baseball season that's coming up during the overtime section. A, a complete. Complete of the 60-game baseball season. Well, it better last about 60 seconds because I've got an 8 o'clock appointment. So I can do it in 45 seconds. We're going we're gonna to make people appreciate the overtime segment. When we take it away, they'll it'll be in high demand by next week. Oh, yeah. People, we'll, Absolutely. We'll, maybe we can do a special overtime. Like a random Wednesday or Thursday, a special overtime edition. Yeah, we, we could do that. All hell breaks loose with scheduling. All right, all right, all right. Because we expect an ACC schedule by the end of the month, correct? Reportedly, the ACC has said that they will make a decision by the end of the month. Um, this week coming up was supposed to be the virtual media days. It was originally supposed to be the media days in North Carolina. Those got canceled and said, hey, we're going to do it virtually. Then you cancel a virtual media day. That doesn't give me much promise that everything's going to be fine and dandy, but who knows? So supposedly by not this Friday, but by next Friday, a decision will be made. I feel like the ACC is going to, they're, they're going to be like the SEC and they're going to wait until the last absolute possible moment. So basically it's like, hey, we had to make this decision. The Big Ten did it. The Pac-12 did it. The Big 12 did it. Now we have to make this decision. What that decision will be, we will find out. I am often criticized for being late for these live streams. And so at this point, I'm somewhat shocked because, you know, it's it's two or three minutes after typically. But I think we we were pretty tardy tonight. Of course, Jason, we don't – he had nothing to do with it. It was my mm -hmm. bit laziness on the couch. I was, I was on the phone. I was talking on the phone. And then I thought I could catch maybe a few winks before the show, or I didn't even intend on that. Maybe pop up a couple of YouTube videos on my phone and just enjoy myself for about 20 minutes leading into the show. And the next thing I knew, 6.59 on the phone. 
wasn't even going to call you out for it. I was just going to let it go. I mean, some of us were ready to go at 650, you know, but that's fine. You know, you know. G14 classified, shout out, supporting Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. Eventually, we will talk about Florida State Athletics at some point. I love the conversation coming uh, in the direction from Mr. G14 classified. He is a full supporter of what we do here. Absolutely. He's here for us all the time. So we appreciate that. Reminds everyone to hit the like button, which, of course, Logan will remind everyone a little bit later in his usual time slot. Okay, well, what do you want to discuss? Do you want to discuss the, the high school rule that's been uh, about, revised? Let's we'll go talk, that route. Let's talk recruiting first, then we'll go into high school because Florida State could, could Florida State steal a recruit from the University of Miami? I know there's a lot of Miami fans in here who are going to say, oh, hell no, but apparently running back Fat Franklin, who was a four-star running back in the class of 2021 from Hollywood Chaminade Madonna High School, uh, he told Knowles 24-7, uh, Zach Glostein, in a, a exclusive interview to the website, he basically said, hey, right now it's 50-50. Uh, he's a four-star running back. Obviously, like I said, Hollywood, uh, Sean Madonna, I believe they were state champion last year. Uh, but that that could be interesting. He said that one of the reasons why Florida State, he has committed to Miami and not Florida State, he hasn't visited Tallahassee yet. And this has been one of the things we've talked about about, about these players who haven't had a chance to visit Florida State, haven't had a chance to visit other schools like Florida, like Georgia. This is where we're at right now with a lot of recruits. And that's why you look at Miami, for example. Miami has all but three of their recruits who are committed to the 2021 class are from Miami-Dade or Broward County. It's convenient. It's it's what you know. And, I'll, you know, give me ideas credit. He has, he's done a good job of, of riling up and waking up the echoes down here in South Florida. You know, obviously, you know, wake up many echoes going six and seven with a three and losing streak to end the season, but that's neither here nor there. Losing to FIU and Louisiana Tech, but neither here nor there. So that's going to be the question. When Fat Franklin does get a chance to go to Tallahassee, can Florida State get him? And for, he told Knowles 24 7 that Florida State has told him they're only going to recruit one running back in the class of 2021. Right now, no running back is committed. So can Fat Franklin flip from that community college in Coral Gables? To a real school in Tallahassee. Who knows at this point? Thad Franklin is the 10th rated court, um, running back in the country, according to the 247 Sports Composite. So this would be, of course, a great flip for the Knowles, considering he was a hard commit as of uh, February 11th, 2020 to Miami. 33rd rated player in Florida, according to the composite again. And uh, 224 nationally. So top 300 player nationally and a top 10 running back. So that would be a for a position that's been downgraded considerably since the absence of Dalvin Cook and, of course, the illustrious running back history of Florida State football before him. It would be get a dynamic back. Uh, I'm missing Cam Akers. My apologies for a quick second there. Of course, he was tremendous as well. He would be, uh, another, he would be another, another great South Florida running back who's come up there. Obviously, Dalvin Cook and Devontae Freeman, both coming from Miami Central High School. They went up to Tallahassee. Uh, I think it, right now I understand why he committed to Miami because Miami did lose running backs. Uh, DJ Dallas, who got drafted into the NFL by Seattle. So I get why he's committing to Miami. He wants to play early. If you come to FSU, he, there's a decent chance that he could see the field early and often in that 2021 season. Kalen LeBourne's going to be gone. Uh, you have Anthony Grant, who transferred out. So, I mean, it could be interesting if he does come to Tallahassee. Lorenzo Lingard, a five-star who had assigned with Miami, transferring to Florida. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been determined whether he's eligible for 2020. I believe he did get a waiver. I, would, I believe I, so. But I believe he did get the waiver, so go up there. So, Take some pride in this, Jason. Yes, Look sir. at Austin Keynes. Notice the last name. Austin Keynes calling this the most entertaining live stream on the internet. We bring a mixture of facts humor, opinions. I don't want to say we're the complete package, but we're the complete package. You don't get this from Cam Underwood. You don't get this from the Ohio State guy. You don't get this. Oh, well, you understand I'm kind of caught in the middle here, Jason, so I'll, I'll let you continue. So e Red, each stream has its flavor. Right, right. Redbeard here posted something on Logan's Twitter account of a video of a guy uh, doing like a Buffalo Bill style wrestling, like going through a table. And he said, oh, it looked like me because the guy had a full beard. He looked like, you know, Vern Troyer, God rest his soul, you know, 
with a full beer and obviously doesn't realize I only have the goatee, lost a lot of weight, so I'm down a little bit. So I said that Red Beer, we were going to get you some glasses. We're going to start a GoFundMe to get you some LASIK or something so that you can actually see. So Red Beer, who gave us $75 last week. God bless you for that. We thank you for that. We will then pay it forward and get your eyes fixed because obviously you can't see anything. Yes, I made these comments about uh, Mr. G14 Classified. Also, of course, Austin Keynes and Redbeard right near the top of the list as well. Thank you so much for your contribution. Not just the Super Chat. You're always here, always supporting, encouraging, always in the live chat, uh, stirring things up. So that's uh, we love it. We love and, it. And now he's technically a Twitter friend of mine, so I guess I can't bad mouth him yeah. too much. Okay. So shout out to Redbeard. Shout out. You're blind as a bat, but shout out to you, buddy. First shout out of the night. Oh, I've got a couple shout outs before the end of this hour. I'm going to shout out everyone here in Pembroke Pines. I've got a food shout out coming in the next half hour. Logan called me out. Good to see you there. But but at least Logan, uh, as he awaited his pizzas, was was uh, monitoring the live stream to make sure that we were on our game. The, the, and we weren't. That's a solid Adam Schefter type sources. You know, we got the sources all capitalized. That's that's solid work, Logan. Uh, that that's that's big league work. I'm proud of you on that one. That is solid. No game day. Well, Mark Rogers, Kyle is showing up with his obligatory political. Still won't vote for you, Mark. I can't do it. Okay, we'll 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 talk uh, during the overtime one time. Maybe we'll slant that one uh, political sometime between now and November. Mark Williams, Mike Williams, go to a NASCAR event. I hated NASCAR growing up. Obviously, down here in South Florida, we didn't have a lot of NASCAR. Homestead didn't start until, I want to say it was 95, 96. Uh, but go to a race. The people watching is hysterical. It's phenomenal. Go to a Danny, NASCAR. Danny, good to see you. Thank you so much for the support. Glad people enjoy our show. The, the one thing that you can do for us is like the video and also go out there and tell people that we're here. So if you enjoy the conversation, not just if you're a Florida State fan, as, as uh, Jason just mentioned a few minutes ago, we bring in fan bases from all over the place. Uh, just let people out there in social media land know that we're here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I also didn't mean to offend you. I accidentally showed the Michigan side of the Orange Bowl Cup here. I apologize. We, we don't want to offend you by showing Michigan. I've got a Michigan helmet on my set here. That's gross. I would never put anything UM or UF in this house. Dear God. I would have to revise my name, though, as the voice of college football. It would have to be the voice of college football minus the maize and blue. Right. It's a little too lengthy, a little cumbersome. No, here's your here's your Michigan preview. They're going to underachieve. There's your preview. <laughs> it has been for about 15 years. You're right. Hey, they're gonna hey, they're gonna be a top ten team who finishes eight and four. There's your preview for Michigan football. So is this a week that you are definitely going to be unveiling your your predictions, or do the predictions need to be I, I I, I'm not clear on this. <laughs> In the next half hour, we can. I can give you my what predictions would have been like had we actually had a full football season. We'll talk about that in the next half hour. But before we go on, I think the question we have to talk about is Thad Franklin, obviously, could he come to Florida State? But more importantly, will Thad Franklin play football this season for 2020? Uh, the FHSAA announced yesterday that they are not moving back the start of football practice, which is now assigned to start next Monday, the 27th, right as we're in the middle of a giant pandemic. and parts of the state of Florida have become the new epicenter, according to the CDC and the Department of Health. And so far, you've already had two counties, Leon County, home of Florida State University, and Logan, Broward County, home of Jason Parker, who've already said, sorry, we're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to put our kids at risk. Uh, Miami-Dade County will reportedly make a decision by the end of this week. Uh, the FHSA has said if these schools pull out, that they can play their games later in the season, they won't be eligible for the state tournament. My biggest question is how you would say if Miami, Dade, and Broward County can't play football this season, that's seven or eight state champions from last year. Are you really going to have a season without your two biggest bastions of high school football talent? I can't see that. I'll personally be running three minutes later to be his little brother, but when I get in, I'll be taking good care of Jason with his Debbie down our ass. Got it. Okay. It's Ricky oh, Willis, number one. Logan. Yeah. Number two. Oh, he's got more? There he is. 30 minutes late. He came in. Right on you, Logan. Right on He doesn't on know. We just time. Look. He doesn't know. Yep. We I was listening. Right I, I was listening while babysitting. I was listening to the show from the very beginning. Except and for like you, last you five minutes. 
Do you disagree with anything I have said so far? Uh, I all right. I'll be honest. I only watched the first like ten minutes, so I've missed the last like twelve. Well, we missed the first ten minutes. Okay, that is true. We were so, about I, late. so I want to let everyone know out there that I'm going to make before I let Logan cut loose and Jason. I am going to make a vow. So I, I don't typically promise anything. I think there's you don't swear, meaning I'm not talking about cussing them. I, I swear I'm going to do this, swear I'm going to do that. But I will. I, my intention is that next week we are going to speak our first words live at seven o'clock Eastern time, not at seven o one or seven o seven or seven eleven. Seven o'clock. Okay. I fell asleep on the couch, Logan. It's on the phone. Oh, it took no. a phone, and I just kind of let it go. Relax. Mark, 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 Mark. Well, Jason's always ready to go at 650. I think he should just be – well, that wouldn't be scary for him to handle the keys going into it at like 655. But So Jason always touts the overtime. Maybe Jason does a pregame, like a 650 pregame to get everybody warmed up. That's the best yeah. That's the best idea you've ever come up with, Mark. You can do like a TikTok dance or something. <laughs> I think we might have dislike. We might have a lot of dislikes on the video, so I don't know. Wait, if wait a minute, here, Jason. Jason. One more, t one more time, full screen. Let's give it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's see Logan's white ass dance like that, son. Uh, Logan, what I said, you could speak to this. Uh, yeah, it's the same one. If it's saying that high schools can start, and we already have Broward County and Leon County saying they won't start practice next week. Dade County reportedly won't say it by the end of this week. How can you possibly have high school football without Miami-Dade and Broward County, which were seven of the eight state champions, and Tallahassee? Yeah, yeah. Nah, you have most of your best competition in that area of the state, literally. Both also, I guess you got like a little bit of Duval, but that's that's tough. You don't have really any kind of competition. This whole thing is going to be a mess. I mean, it's something that's never been seen before. Uh, and so I, I don't know how you kind of prepare and what you do, move it back to spring. I know a couple of states are doing that and are working on trying to get that together. But I don't know how they're going to do it here in Florida. They got a long ways to go. I think they're going to have to make some uh, they're going to have to make some big time decisions here coming up soon. Like you said, Jason, some of these counties are going to have to do them at the end of this week and then definitely early next week because stuff starts get rolling start stuff starts to get rolling soon because whenever i was in high school and stuff you had we were starting to have workouts around this time uh, you had about three like two or three weeks before school started public school started and um, you were already early uh, two a days morning then afternoon and that's most certainly going on in dade county and they, they've got to get preparate uh, prep for all of that so i it's a whole it's a whole mess uh and i, I don't know what they're going to do it's it's going to change up recruiting too now even though mark i'm going to jump in here for real second i'm going to take the keys for one second because we're going to give logan a little love even though he doesn't know that we do this on tuesdays he can't get another babysitter to take care of his his brother on a tuesday night i get it you love your family family love comes first i get it Logan posted something on Noel Game Day, or one of his minions posted something on Noel Game Day, <laughs> talking about the leader, the executives from the Chick fil A Kickoff Classic, which is hosting three games this year. It's Florida State, West Virginia. Uh, I believe it's Georgia, Virginia, and North Carolina, Auburn are the three games over the first two weeks. And he said, These games are going to go on. We're essentially going to have these games. So, Logan, Speak to speak to this so that I may shoot down the entire theory. <laughs> I knew I knew it was going to come either way, uh, but so the CEO and president of the Peach Bowl uh, has told the Tallahassee Democrat. He told it yesterday that they were going to indeed have all three games. They have a whole platter of games and uh, Big Ten, SEC, and ACC. Um, Florida State. I can't remember how much money Florida State's going to get. Uh, by going to this, it'll probably change most certainly. But the CEO also told uh, somebody today that they'd lose a hundred million dollars uh, if you know the games were canceled. So that's a big amount of money. Uh, so what they're doing right now is working with actually the university, uh, every university in this, and from both sides, they still want this to go on. Um, of course, you know if you go to coaches and whatnot, of course they're going to say, "Let's play football. Let's do it." It all depends on the safety and how many people they can put in that stadium. Uh, they're prepping for 
30% and 25%. The lowest is 25% that they would allow to have inside of the stadium as of right now. That's just preparation. But this all has to go through with, obviously, um, uh, legal stuff, government, uh, what they say there on that high level, then also goes down to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, as a whole, uh, the owners there, and then also the um, the CEO of the Peach Bowl. Of course, he wants to play it. He's going to be eager to say, let's get it going, got to get the money. Uh, and then it also goes towards you know, the, the conversations between the conference uh, guys and then the coach, the presidents at the universities. But so far, the universities from every from every school so far, West Virginia, though, is still having some trouble with having to get uh, some of their players out of the positive area with the COVID situation, because I think they delayed their um, workouts two weeks, if I'm correct. They did that a, couple, a little while ago. Uh, so West Virginia, Florida State currently has a, a pretty decent lead on, on, on prep for, um, even though it's a little, it's a good ways away, but still, uh, they're going to have a little prep ahead of West Virginia. Uh, but uh, so far, they're they're still wanting to get this on a roll. And if they do have the game, Jason, I will tell you, I will be going because oh. you only live once. I will wear a mask. I will put I won't put gloves on because that is ridiculous. But I will I will be safe. I will not be tailgating, and um, I'll just go. It's gonna be like a business trip. Go in, go out. But it is going to be a packed weekend if they are going to have all three games, most certainly. It's for, a busy, busy weekend for them. For the record, and, and, and Logan Logan thought that I was going to go guns blazing in here on him. For the record, Florida State has nearly $300-plus of my money for tickets that I purchased for family members who are going to the game. They the, the committee, once they put out the press credentials, will have my media credential request put in which will likely get approved. I want this game to go on. I want Florida State to play West Virginia in Atlanta. My question is this. If you've got the, 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 the Big Ten, Mark's Ohio State Conference, says we're only playing these nine conference games. The Pac-12 says we're only playing these nine conference games. How are we as the ACC going to come back and say, we're going to play these 12 games? How are we going to sit here and say, you've got you know Notre Dame's going to play Clemson, how that's actually going to happen, but Notre Dame can't play USC. I want us to play West Virginia. I don't think we will. And I think it's going to come out of a fact that we're going to come in the next week and a half. The ACC is going to make a decision. They're going to cut down to just conference games. And I think if they're smart, they cut down to the eight conference games and they add a nine game. I think nine games is going to be our best chance to have a college football season because you play nine games, you start October 3rd, it's nine straight weeks, Last game comes on Thanksgiving weekend. You play those nine weeks. You move your season back a month. I know it's not it's not rocket science, but it's a lot better than it was before. And that's going to be your best way. That's going to be the only way we are going to have some semblance of a college football season because you've already got conferences in the FCS, the MEAC, the SWAC. I think it's the Patriot League that you know, who are already canceling their entire seasons. I think it's the CAA said that they can their teams can play as independents if they want to. James Madison, for example. And I'm not saying that those conferences don't take uh, football and athletics seriously, but they're actually saving money by not playing. No, they're saving money by not playing, and it sucks. Like for example, it's the reverse know, issue for everybody else when you talk Florida State level. You're losing money by not playing. Like if you don't think Sanford is going to be hurt at all by the fact that they wouldn't get a Florida State payday for coming down to Tallahassee, no, of course it's going to hurt them. The two FCS schools that Florida's playing are going to get hurt by the fact that they wouldn't get paid if Florida goes to a conference-only schedule or a conference-only plus the Florida State game. That that's that's it's the only way you can do it this year. It sucks. It's horrible. But it, but it's what's going to be apt to happen. By the way, the last Franklin kid who was a troublemaker was from a plantation. It's Broward County. It's not Miami. You know what I took from that entire dissertation that Logan brought us, which I am grateful for. Sure. The, the thing that was running through my mind was, man, we, we got an inside source here with Logan. We bring him on. He's got the inside source. I own the keys to the channel. Jason, I'm still trying to figure out why I asked you on. But, you know, we, we, oh, we, we all have our role. I'm just kidding, Jason. Of course. That, I'm, here for more, I'm here for moral support. That's yes, Jason's the – he's a little, for what? a little vinegar to it. I, a little, I, I, I did – 
I was getting a lot of compliments for some reason. I had a few people tell me in, in our Discord and actually, I think in person, or someone, t yeah, someone texted me. They said that they actually laugh and they have a good time between the arguments that me and Jason have on the show. And they also laugh at the Willie Taggart right. and the Jimbo Fisher ordeal that Mark does with Jason. But they actually enjoy kind of just the whatever comedy that also comes with this show. I did want to give Logan his props because yesterday, I saw James Franklin's Instagram, um, Amari Gaynor's Instagram, all these guys, all members of the FSU football team, they, they reposted what Noel Game Day put on their Instagram, oh. talking about the story about the West Virginia game. It made Noel Game Day relevant for once. I mean, I was very proud of it. <laughs> I, need, I, I needed that. You know, that's the one thing. If That might be our only thing because we're young. We were able to go to classes with these guys, okay. connections, played with Gaynor in high school. That, that might be the only thing that's going for Noel Game Day right you're now, good. at least for our Twitter. At least you're for good. our Twitter. Stop. You're good. We, we had at least three or four comments right here on the live stream that we took to the screen, Logan, before you jumped on. Just people saying that aren't even Florida State fans that this is the highlight of their week. Most entertaining yeah. show on the Internet. So that's you two. <laughs> that's you two doing that. You know what was going through my mind, actually? Then I got diverted by trying to, to jab Jason a little bit. But what I was actually thinking is Logan was going through all the ins and outs of the inside source in regards to what's going to happen to this event, possibly, was that my goal for you two is that you guys are such popular Florida State media reps that you guys should be able to walk into any stadium that Florida State's playing in America. Just walk right into the press box and have your credentials right there. Shouldn't have to pay a dime for anything, you two. I mean, I didn't. I was credentialed for, let's see, the Syracuse game, the NC State, the Miami game last year. And I walked it in my FSU guard. I think I did get a free media meal. I think I did. And then I just went down to my seats. Yeah. I think I scanned a free meal out of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm this year, but, you know. Logan, are you good uh, with the uh, Thad Franklin flip? Thad Franklin, what, what is that? He's a running back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, so he said that he's now – that he's got floor say at 50-50. Um, oh, he didn't little, flip. I'm sorry. Didn't well, he, flip not, him. No, of course he could flip him, though. Uh, he did say he told Knowles 24 7 that, that uh, Florida State will only take one running back. Do you think that's a smart move for Florida State to only get one running back in the 2021 class? Mm, I'd always think having a little bit more back there is not a bad idea with Florida State's kind of past experience. You know, you usually doubt even Dalvin Cook during his time, he was hindered a few times during the season. LeBourne has been 50 50 throughout his career at FSU. He's a great and talented guy, was really talented in high school, comes in at five star, but we really, it's crazy to think, but we have not really seen him play. Yeah to what I think he can and, and his kind of caliber. He's had a tough, tough season. Um, but you do have you do have a lot of talent coming in at running back, but you would like to probably have in uh, at least at least two more guys. But uh, I trust I trust Norvell uh, and I really trust um, Coach Johnson and, and what they're going to do at the running back position because you know they, they've had some success with taking guys and putting them into the NFL. If they feel like they're they're um, their capacity is uh, pretty full and with what they can do, um, then let it be. But um, yeah, I think it's something interesting to keep an eye on for sure. And that, I think that, that kind of guy too um, will have to, he'll have to make his, he'll make his decision once football season starts. Uh, I don't think that will be any time soon. If he's a Florida guy switching, I don't really know who his top teams are. It's Florida and, is it Florida? What are the top? Do you know? He's, Florida, committed, Florida. he's committed to Miami. I guess my question would Miami. be: Does he flip to Florida State before you get your cat under control in your room? I, I, honestly, she's been scared away from my little brother all day, so now she's coming in here and she's gonna aggravate me. Even though I can try throwing her out, but she's gonna meow the whole time. So she gets her way. Um, sadly. She's yeah. probably pacing about this recruiting class in 2021. So right now it's 26th ranked according to the uh, composite 247 sports. 
You bring in a top 25 class. Most schools are happy with that. But of course, we're talking about a different level in Florida State and what you're used to. Now, you can bring in the 25th class and you can coach them up and it could be a really solid class. But that's not the type of class that you want to be bringing in year after year after year after year. So were you guys a bit concerned about uh, the level of recruiting at this point? I am. And we've talked about this before. I'm more concerned about the fact that there there's a seeming there seems to be the, an, an ignoring of the state of Florida. And we've talked about this when I, when I said the reason why all these Miami guys are getting all these guys from South Florida to commit is because these guys can't travel. These guys can't come to Tallahassee. They can't take their visits. Um, I think once things will open up a little bit more, I think you'll see some of these guys flip, not just from Miami or Florida. Maybe Florida State loses a couple guys. Maybe we gain a couple guys. Um, but I, there is a little bit of a concern. I'd like to see more of a commitment to the state of Florida, not just here in South Florida, but the Orlando area, the Tampa area. Uh, the Jacksonville area. I'd like to see more of a commitment. I'd like to also see Logan get his cat under control. This is a professional atmosphere here. Jesus. Okay. So yes. Can't make it up. Now, now Logan's going to sit here and say Mike Norvell walks on water. So now let's go to. His- <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I will not do that. I'm not too worried. I think with everything going on, you don't have a lot of camps. You can't have guys going to work, do mm-hmm. things and blah, blah. And recruiting has been restricted a lot and not being able to bring in guys for visits and whatnot. I think it's a tough situation. Obviously, uh, this is Florida State and those that's pretty low. But the last couple of season, even when Jimbo Fisher were here, was just, just nasty. So, uh, there's a lot of there. Norvell has got a lot of weight on his shoulders going into this first season. Uh, that's why I really, for the optimistic part, I would like to see Florida state at least play West Virginia, because I don't think that game should be really close after the third quarter. Um, and that would be a nice win for FSU, um, on a neutral side game. Hasn't happened in a long while. And it kind of gets recruits looking a little bit more when you're on the national television stage. So, um, but I do, this is FSU being that low is just something that, you know, we have Florida state fans haven't been used to, um, in a good while. So I think things will switch up a little bit once uh, football gets started, just got to have some positives. And when I talked with Demarcus Walker and he had a meeting with, um, Mike Norvell a couple weeks ago, and he just told me straight up that he's got a, a lot of S H I T to fix up, um, and I'm sure Norvell was straight up with them and tell him the kind of hardships that he's going through and things that he was left with, both organizational wise, what he was probably hearing they were running practices with. We're, we're, we keep on hearing about what in the, we don't even know what they were doing during practice under Taggart. Um, and so it was so un, un, unorganized for Jimbo Fisher during his last year and how it was, just wasn't the Jimbo Fisher way in his last season. That wasn't Jimbo Fisher um, so there, there's just a lot of stuff that he's got to fix and doing that with recruiting is going to cause, is going to have to be going out and winning games. You know, it's, it's just, just no visiting, no true visiting happening. So you're telling me there was actually a time where Jimbo Fisher gave a damn about FSU before he bailed at the program in 2017, right? There was actually, a yes. time. Yes. Yes. If, if he didn't give a damn Jason, he must be the greatest <laughs> coach in the history of college football <laughs> to win 80 some percent of his games Wait, in the national just... championship and go undefeated another season into the playoff. You would have to be a genius to be that good and not, eh, I don't really care, but I'm we can still go I'm just 10, 11 games. I'm just wondering because Demarcus Walker's talking all this smack about about Willie Taggart, and I understand he was he was, you know, nine and twelve. It was what his record was. I'm just trying to remember, I'm pretty sure. Walker's ass was out the door after the Orange Bowl in the 2016 season, and he never played it down under Willie Taggart. He wasn't in the locker room. He wasn't on the field. He wasn't a part of the dumpster fire in 2017, 2018, 2019, but yet he's still going to talk smack about it. Okay, good. <laughs> good job, DeMarcus. Enjoy Denver. Uh, <laughs> I, I, right, not, that, that wasn't just a shout-out to Marcus. It's a shout-out to any player who – and I'm not just talking about the, the Willie Taggart. I'm talking about anyone who doesn't – who wasn't a part of something, but feels like they have to talk smack about something. I would say the same thing about somebody talking smack about Jimbo who didn't play for the Jimbo Fisher era. If you weren't a part of it and you weren't around it, you can't talk about it. Sorry. And, and I, I'd say that about anyone. Okay. And I'll say that about, about the Mike Norvell era, the Willie Tagger era, the Jimbo Fisher era. If you weren't a part of that era, you can't talk about it. Am I allowed to talk about it? You were because you've been a part of it all. So you were allowed to talk about it. I'm only allowed to talk about the Bobby Bowden era. Uh, yeah, you get to you you get to take care of the whole Bobby Bowden. 
damn, I'm sorry. Sarah, you get you went you went off there, Jason. You went off on poor Demarcus Walker, Mamba Mode, Kobe Bryant quote tweeted yeah. him. Demarcus Walker had a lot of great sacks. I was a great fan of him. He did one good thing, and that was the block at the rock. That was for well forever be his oh. Seven straight win over Miami. It was great. What about the Ole Miss game, four sacks. Yeah. Devon, First game of the season. You were no. down like 28-10 in that game, right? Big comeback in the second half. <laughs> yeah. Like a fumble recovery. That was the Ricky Aguayo game. That was the Ricky Aguayo. I, I thought – That was the turtle game. Come on now. <laughs> That's your last uh, – Logan, you were talking about uh, winning big non-conference games at a neutral site. That was that yeah. was the game right there. They were really the good at Ole Miss. That was That's also the- our last opening game victory. It's the Ole Miss game in 2016. Yeah, that Do you guys was, that have was, any uh, info on Corey Collier? We're talking third-rated safety in the country, top 15 player in Florida, top 100 player overall. Uh, Miami Palmetto, I know we talk on our Miami show about these Palmetto boys, five of them, uh, obviously considering Miami, but other schools. And the crystal ball on at 247 Sports, 50% for Florida State. That's probably just a one out of two at this point. But uh, somebody likes uh, Collier to Florida State, and he's one of the best in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It's, so his, it's been a hot topic. Yeah, his dad was a uh, linebacker for Florida State. We're getting his collier. Uh, so he's looking at right now. It looks like LSU. I believe it's Florida, and I want to say Miami is the third school. So yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, it goes back to, and this isn't just a knock against Storm Bell. I would say the same thing with Floyd Tiger. Would you send your kid to Florida State right now? Judging what you've seen from Florida State the last three seasons, and I, I get that Cornelius Collier is a former Seminole. I understand the legacy aspect, but we talked about this last week with Dion. If Dion Sanders' own son doesn't go to Florida State, do we, are, I mean, is Cornelius Collier, Collier's son really the end of the world? I mean, it, I would like everyone to go to Florida State. If I'm fortunate enough to have children, I'd love them to go to Florida State. But, but for right now, it's not the sexy Florida State it was 10, 15 years ago. I'm sorry to say that, but that's a fact. Yeah, it's been a big discussion inside of our Discord. We like football recruiting in there. I swear there's probably at least 500 to 1,000 messages a day about it. And Collier has been a huge discussion. And Nate takes care of our recruiting stuff. He is in connection with these guys and he interviews five a friggin' night. And but the thing with Collier, from what I've learned from Nate, um, FSU just might not be that interested in him. It's, he's got a praise on a lot of sites, and he's got talent there, but FSU might be fine with what they're going after. Um, uh, FSU might be going after somebody else that they feel a little bit more comfortable with or what they have now. Uh, there's just been a lot of talk that the talent thing might be a little bit overrated, um, and that's why they were hoping to have another season. You know, I mean, if we're gonna have some friggin' football, but that might be the thing there for the what might be causing this to be happening. Florida State just might simply not be going after them as much. Coach Woodson might not be um, really targeting him. Mark, go back on that previous comment, please, please. I'm begging you. Please. There. We I don't had know which one it was. record last season. We both finished six and seven. You lost three straight games to end the season. You lost to FIU and got shut out by Louisiana Tech. Thank you. You also had a tougher schedule, meaning Florida State. You have to play Clemson. You had to play two big boys in the non-conference, Florida and Boise State, not just Florida. We played Arizona State in the bowl game. They played Louisiana Tech and couldn't score a point against Louisiana Tech. But as we've talked about here, Jason, it's tough to trash talk and argue the two points because of the head-to-head. You, you get oh, that, right? My you, internet might be going out. Sorry uh-oh. to discuss, but my my Wi-Fi might be going, or my power might be going out. We're flickering over here. There's uh-oh. a thunderstorm get outside. On that. First of all, two things, Mark. Number one, it's oh. never hard to talk smack here. That's number one. I can talk smack about anything. If we go 0-12, I'll still talk smack. But you know what else isn't hard to do? Hitting the like button. And before his power goes out, somebody's going to tell you why you should. <laughs> Hit that like button right now. I think we had 170, 180 likes on the last video as a whole for our last live stream. Hit that like button so then we'll be, it'll notify you and you'll actually be able to share it with more people. Make sure you subscribe too so then you'll be able to see all the new 
FSU videos. I think we're going to start working as a team here, getting some previews for offense, defense, and all that kind of stuff and special teams. So make sure you subscribe so you'll see the new videos coming out soon because there is maybe some football coming up soon in a little while. Um, but if you like that, like it, tell us in the chat if you've liked it. Um, Shout out to Guy Davis. Always in here. Appreciate him. He's big on Twitter and always liking stuff. Guy Davis, George is always in here, the Gator. Um, and then the rest of the 80% of Kane fans that are in here. Um, Do you see yeah. uh, our, our Sparty fan here, MSU number one fan? You see the goal for the likes right there? And we're going to hit that like. Our goal is 500. If we, yeah, if we, get, <laughs> if we ever get 500 likes on a video, we will – Jason will do a TikTok dance – and post it on Twitter. <laughs> what, what the hell is a TikTok? Don't even start. You work in media. You know what a TikTok is. Yeah, Come I, on. Do, I know I, TikTok. I, I, I have an Instagram, and that's literally for work. I have never posted anything on it. <laughs> that's where I saw your, your crap yesterday. Thank, I thank even God have you TikTok. haven't posted. Do I have it downloaded? Yeah, I even have TikTok downloaded. Wow. Somebody introduced me to TikTok, and yeah, I had to partake a little bit. You have, you have, you have children in their teens and early 20s, right? So yeah, that's why you... They didn't introduce me to TikTok. But yeah, I'm, I'm aware of TikTok. I know that there's some some cute little funny things that people do on TikTok. It's a good time. Do you want to talk, Jason, about the new talk. booster? I want to talk. Yeah, do you, do you, yeah. Do you want to talk? That's a good question, right? About the new uh, CEO, uh, the Seminole Boosters. Uh, do you want me to say something nice, or do you want me to say how I think it's a, not a great move? Oh you wow! Know why you're negative here, Nancy. Nancy. For hey, negative Nancy. Nancy. It's it's Ricky Realty. Said this number one. Okay. I I I feel. I mean, I understand why the move was made. I get it. He's a, he's a. He's good at making money. He's good at bringing money in. He's good at getting things done. And right now. Florida State is a position where they're still trying to build the football only facility. They're still trying to bring in the funds. Uh, Andy Miller is leaving his position as Seminole Boosters after nearly what seems like half a century running the ship over there. So I get it. I understand it. I, I'm just – I'm not a fan of, of the best we can do is bringing a guy from Central Michigan. I get it, but it's, it's Central Michigan. I feel like I feel like there's a lot of other people we could have gone for you're bringing in the athletic director from Central Michigan. It's a Mac school. Sorry, sorry. Shout out, shout out to Kent State, the alma mater of Mark Rogers. But sorry, it's a Mac school. Let me let me give you some. Oh, let here me we give go. You some, uh, let me let me give you some of this real quick. This like been, I love this. This day is good. Hold on, okay. you like yes, you like him. I can't wait. Father, he's probably got a southern accent. He says y'all. You guys will go to Daytona together. You guys will have fun. It'll be great. Uh, I I can't wait to be in Daytona next month. All right, so yes. FSU's new CEO for Summer Boosters has had ex has experience mm -hmm. with, and we you know you were just saying from the MIAC, he has had experience with the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys. We're talking America's team. Go Steelers, though. But America's team, big old stadium, gorgeous. He wow. cultivated corporate relationships that resulted in over – their last over. When was their last Super Bowl title? Over four hundred million dollars. I didn't think in actual revenue. I didn't. And this is what his job is. He's not his. His job is not to recruit or coach or be out there to get wins or anything. He is supposed to bring in the moolah to keep the people in the stands to make that uh, that uh, IP or make the football only facility that Clemson has to keep up. Shoot to keep up with Pittsburgh's facilities that's fine Shoot, maybe to keep up with the MIAC teams uh, Mac, to keep up with the wake, wake the for it fam you is the MIAC. they're in the mac it's not the MIAC. the MIAC is fam Shoot, fam you starting to hit off hit it off with their new facilities and you had a better record than we did the last two seasons um I, i'm not saying, i'm not saying that they are that he's not good at his job i'm saying i feel like this shows that we are not I feel like we could have gone for something better. Number one, number two, did he was he the man personally behind Jerry World? No, he wasn't. So, calm down on that one. Okay. Right. Continue reading. Number two, MoleGameDay.com. The, remember, this is past experience. Oh. The Bengals, another NFL team. Well, Alabama, yeah. Alabama. 
Bama, Tuscaloosa, Nick Saban. Oh, not enough experience there. Oh, we'll go to Oklahoma real quick. Oklahoma. What did he do there? He didn't just work there. He set an annual giving record for donations. Where's my money at? Where I need my wallet. Donations in 2013 and 2014, back-to-back -back seasons. Are you reading? In 2013, Florida State did win the national championship that year, and so it's not like they were winning the national championship. And then over to the West Coast. We can do it on the West Coast, too, if we want to. We're going over to USC Trojans has that experience there. So I think those are some pretty good schools to have had past experience and also cultivate a lot of money bringing in $400 million and uh, partner relationships like that. I will take that any day of the week. Let's, let's bring it in. Why, number one, why couldn't he stay at one school? That would be my question. That's number one. And number two, did you read that straight off MoleGameDay.com or where did you read that? Straight off of at Logan's Twitty on Twitter. Follow me there if you want any more optimistic news and just straight up news. That was, I mean, that was a thing that I think FSU fans would like to hear. But I think it's something that uh, obviously Florida State needs money. I mean, they're not in desperate, desperate mode, but having some money to get started with this practice, this uh, football only facility is something that has to get going because Willie Taggart, ain't, he's going to take his money back. Well, he, um, he's a million dollars more than Mike Norvell has. Yeah. Well, and so they need some money to be able to do their things and upgrade a lot of these facilities. And the gym would, the gym, Florida State has a nice gym in the more, but it is shared with about every other sport. Uh, around campus, which sucks, and it, it, it's it's pitiful there. I think baseball has their own gym, but um, it's, it would help a lot of scheduling for uh, football players, for classes and whatnot. It just helped the team as a whole really be a little bit more organized. So building that football-only facility obviously helps a, helps a lot, and uh, it seemed to be work, it worked out really well for uh, Clemson. Now, my legitimate question would be right now in our economic situation, which let's be honest, right now we are not in our best situation. I'm not just talking about FSU. I'm talking about the country as a whole. We will eventually bounce back. It's, it's going to happen. Stock market's doing pretty well. What's that? I'm, I'm a big stock guy. I love watching the stock market and making my trades every day. We're doing pretty well there. Keep going. You're right. I will say we will eventually at some point bounce back under the Joe Biden administration. So I had to throw that one out there. And what was just for you? See if you're paying attention there, Chief. So uh, what do you think he has to do to both combat the fact of Florida State with their financial situation in our current mode? How much harder is it going to be for him to go out there and get that money and say, give to a product that with all due respect is seven and six, five and seven, six and seven? Their last three seasons. Well, have you ever watched a Dallas Cowboys game and seen their seasons? No, I, I don't watch crap on TV. <laughs> well, there you go. I don't. If he's able to work with that and help bring up stuff, have you watched USC? I mean, USC. they weren't ever the same since Reggie Bush, let's be honest. Stop. Shoot. Stop. Am I on drugs? They, I mean, they, have they, I seen them in the playoffs? USC is a household name. I played that on NCAA whatever it was, 24 seven with Reggie Bush. I would like to see before I have gray hair, which I might if I keep on doing this show with Jason throughout another season, I would like to see them get into a playoff and maybe win a national championship just for the fun of college football before I die. I'm um, sure I'll get hate from the chat on that, but of course we always want FSU to win. Whoa. I had them playing Alabama in the, in the, uh, the Sugar Bowl in the playoff. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then um, and I had Clemson playing Ohio State. Or, yeah, Oklahoma playing Ohio State, the Sugar Bowl, the Rose Bowl. <laughs> well, that's bold. But anyways, I, I, it's going to take, obviously, I think, I think bringing in this guy is going to help a lot with building – partnerships with even bigger companies and being smart with the money. And it's maybe bringing a little bit more organization because it's always been kind of a screw up with the boosters and the athletics. It feels like they're always not always on the same line of um, communication and hopefully they can work on that. Um, someone with some really, really good experience and in a big time situations that the biggest the biggest uh, sports team in the world 
um, with the Cowboys that generate, I think, what, the most money every year. I mean, what else do I have to say? I don't know if I need to even be arguing anymore. I think that's a pretty good pickup. Plus, Florida State did bring in the former uh, football of operations with the Rams. Also, I can't remember his name. I'm sure, I'm sure someone can hit me up in the chat and tell me. Um, but the former football operations, I believe, are director – uh, also is on board with FSU. Mike Norvell hired him and snabbed him from LA. So you mix these two guys together and we might have a little, you know, I have some money on the side. We so might get. When did you become such a Cowboys fan? Like, were you a Cowboys fan deep at heart? What happened? Like, I'm a Steelers fan. fan. I'm just yeah. telling money. I like business. I like, that's what I'm going to school for. I like business and Jerry's world. I think, think has done a pretty good job at making some uh, money moves. You are like the younger Skip Bayless is what you are. A little country, <laughs> a little, you know, a little just saying combative, incorrect things. I mean, you are the young Skip Bayless. <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think I think it's a good – it's good optimism on the fin financial part for FSU. Um, I just, we just got to see what they come up with. I'm sure there's going to be different kind of campaigns and stuff like that. Uh, hopefully, Florida State can find success on that. I've been flying by just tons of great comments and questions for both of you and for myself in the in the live chat. But this conversation has been pretty fascinating to get Logan's take primarily, both of your takes. But Logan has brought it in regards to the 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 new addition and uh, just the overall state of Florida State football, the facilities, the the money generation, the recruiting. So I just let you guys go because that's good stuff. Mark is happy that I just put Ohio State in my playoff before the season. This was obviously when we had a full season, 12 games. Everyone has 12 games. I thought Ohio State would get shellacked by Oregon second game of the season and bounce back and then play Oklahoma. Uh, I was concerned about that. You Needed should. your pick to make me rest easy at night, Jason. You should. I know. What we, could we do, Mark, I don't know if you have anything other – on like the sheet, but could we do like a rapid fire kind of question thing in the chat? Because I we always get so many questions, but I, we always like are talking a lot. But what about like they were just running through rapid questions, and Jason and me and all of us can like do like quick answers because okay. I feel like there's a lot of questions. Here we go. First rapid World Series prediction. Go. <laughs> What's the name of this show? Yankees over, Yankees over Nationals in six games. See, that's how all we had to Thank do. Thank God you aren't in business. That's all we <laughs> in baseball. Yankees, Nationals, six games. Go. Yeah. We, uh, we've got like 80 online, and I don't know how many people care about that. Two? Uh, maybe? You watch Cleveland Indians baseball like crazy, don't you? I love baseball. We're talking Florida State football. And Logan was just making the comment off the comment that I made that we get all these comments they're actually about Florida State football that we should try to do our best to get to. But I just thought the conversation was. was just great. So I just let it go because he's a genius. Let's, really good stuff. Let's get this going. Let's get these questions going. Yeah. Well, we're getting questions that aren't even related to Florida State. One is a uh, marijuana question. Okay. Um, Here, I'll even switch over for the Miami fans. Are you happy? We have the Marlins hat on there. We got the old school 93 Marlins hat. There we go. Well, we uh, have the uh, have run out of time and I don't have any additional time tonight, but I'll, I'll serve up like one question that I saw because there was a lot of stuff about um, recruiting. There was stuff about Clemson. When can you uh, reasonably think that uh, Florida State can compete with Clemson? But I'll throw this one out because Austin Keynes was asking about what player both in the 2020 class, 2021 class. So the ones that have committed, but the ones that are already on campus ready to go for 2020, are you guys most excited to see? It's a good question. Uh, for me, that are already on campus, that are going to be playing, that are eligible to play, um, I'm hearing really, really good things about Stephen Jix Jr. Um, we were hearing it was a lot of hype for him, kind of when he was committed and he was on campus, and you kind of could tell he's a different kind of animal. But he kind of looks like a little. I wouldn't say little, but he kind of looks like a clone of Ernie Sims. Ernie Sims was one of my favorite when I was little, one of my favorite linebackers to watch and play. I think even teams outside of and in college football liked Ernie Sims. Uh, and he, Stephen Dix Jr. has has put on some pounds. But when I say pounds, it's not kind of just like uh, just bad weight added on. I mean, it, I don't know how much fat he has on him. He looks good. 
He looks in shape, and that's a true freshman. And from what I've heard close in, that's a guy that's in that same linebacker unit. He said, watch out for Stephen Dix Jr. And the one that I talked to about it, he has – he has a he has a um, he's got a little bit of an ego. He's cocky a little bit. So for him to say to keep a lookout on a true freshman says something to me. And you know, Chris Marv too. I think is is um, something optimistic in regards to Stephen Dix Jr. Because we've heard so much good stuff about uh, Chris Marv and what he's done as a young coach at the linebacker position, and it needs to be enhanced. So if Stephen Dix Jr. comes in and if he's playing. Uh, I think I, uh, I think that's a good sign for FSU in production wise and development in that linebacker unit. I think for me, the one guy from the 2020 class I'm looking for is uh, Brian uh, Robinson, wide receiver from uh, West Palm Beach area. I look for him because we've talked about what wide receivers are going to come in and complement to Marion Terry. Um, is it going to be Keyshawn Hill? Who are these guys going to come in? I'm not saying he's going to start the first game of the season, but I think he has the size that a lot of these guys don't. And I think he's somebody who you could, by the end of the year, see him getting some serious playing time. And with Tamari and Terry being gone, we're going to need as many guys with as much playing time as possible and as much experience for the 2021 season. So I think it's important that Florida State gets him in early and often in the 2020 season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to see a little sneak peek picture, right, Jason, yesterday of him. And he looks like he is kind of a junior. He looks at the size of it. And I think a lot of his hype was hindered down because everybody was worried about Malachi Weidman and if he was going to commit to FSU. And that was a whole ordeal and people were freaking out. But, I mean, Brian Robinson is very talented. He's got good size on him, too. Um, And he might be flying under the radar. And we might see him early into the 2020 season um, if FSU and and Mike Norvell and Dillingham can get him going on that offensive side. Because, like Jason said, he's a a young guy and talented and has really, really good – really good – it looks good physically. Um, Wait, I had credibility before him? Oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks, guys. All right. Guys, save our political conversations for the end of October. We're going to have a full-scale political conversation. Mark Rogers, that be? What, Mark, what Rogers, are we go- Mark Rogers, Jason Parker, two men enter, one man leaves. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to watch that. I don't think I want to take yeah, part in that. Oh come on, battle royale! Let's do this. Uh, I actually want to want to see the two guys that are actually running for president. It would be nice to see them debate, not the two of us. Let's see them <laughs> debate. I want to see them in like a WWF wrestling match. Oh my that goodness! The broken, All right. broken backs. Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day, Jason Parker, NBC Six. We talk Florida State football every Tuesday night at seven o'clock Eastern Time, and for those people commenting in the chat and we we appreciate that you want to see more Florida State talk from us sponsor might equal more then I get mm-hmm. guys on the payroll incentive to stay here talk give of our time I'm yeah. just saying so help us out there if you got a yeah. question let us know money yeah, any, preferably a brewing company a beer brewing that would be really cool to sit here and advertise it and maybe you know enjoy after it hits eight o'clock we have a beer and we kind of let it loose and jason starts saying smart things and then one day logan will actually graduate from florida state (laughs) this is the best part of the show right here next week i'll bring my degree so logan can see what it actually looks like to have a degree from (laughs) fsu he's gonna have my time Class of 2020, he'll graduate this year, hopefully, God willing. Will he ever, ever step foot on campus again? Who knows? Hey, if you guys want to keep going, I'll step away. Mm. If people want to ask questions, I've got like 15 okay. more minutes in me. I can I, I can answer some questions. I, I wish I could uh, remove my screen, but my deal kind of keeps the whole thing going. So, the Oh, yeah. You, if you need to step off. I'll yeah. keep my little business hey, conference what? call a, a bit silent over here so you're not be able to hear me and we'll let these two cut loose well, let's do that next all week. right see you next tuesday night boys those of you, see you mark Logan and i are doing some uh as he mentioned roster breakdowns a little later this week so be looking out for those yes it'll be just me and mark <laughs> they suck i had to do them last year they're not good they're not fun <laughs> anyway guys no here's what we're gonna do it's save my the, turn no we're gonna save the questions for next week we're gonna do a whole next week ask your questions next week Bring your questions to us. 
we promise we will answer as many questions as possible. James Coleman will probably be here so he can answer some questions. Logan might be sober enough to answer some questions. I might actually answer a question without being a smart ass. Who knows what's going to happen here with Mark Rogers. So come back next week. We promise we will be here for you. Got Am I going to be solo here? I'm all energized. I'm here. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. 15 minutes. You have me for 15 minutes. It's 15. It's 15 minutes. Yeah. We're still looking at Mark. Face over here. Look at Mark. Look at Mark. Great jawline. He's doing a good job. He's muted. Yeah. But yeah, if there's any any questions, recruiting, yeah. football, predict if you want our predictions for anything, starting lineup, offense, defense, special teams, anything of that nature, we're getting close to football. As much as Jason keeps on saying that we're not going to have football, we're not going to be playing in September in Atlanta, There's we are going to talk some football because nothing has been official yet. So we are going to do our due diligence and answer questions. Because according to people like Logan, there's no pandemic. All is well. Everything is fine. It, it's all the fault of certain those those nerdy scientists who are just telling you that people are dying every day in our state. Go ahead, Logan. Answer the question. <laughs> Come on, Debbie Downer. I'm I'm ready to be there in Atlanta. I will be there, and I will I will send you a picture of me enjoying it. And I probably won't be near anybody, and I'll be Logan hanging out. Logan, for good. Sorry to cut you off. You need to be my political police here. You know that, Logan? You got to take control I here. I, I, I heard a COVID comment, and I had to rush from the other side of the room here. <laughs> let's, I will, let's rein it in. Here we go. Now, we're, all right, yeah, we're cutting you off, Jason, from that. We're going to mute you. But we, have a, we do have a real good question here, finally. Someone has given us a good one here from Eddie. Can you pull them up or not? I cannot. Uh, no, maybe next week he can give us that. But this is from Eddie. I'll, I'll read it. I'll, I'm gonna read it out though for you. Um, so this is Eddie. How much of the offensive line play being so horrible over the last few years can it be attributed to horrible quarterback play and ability to read defenses and efficiently run an offense? I, um, I, I, I'm torn with that one because if you look at the 2016 season, for example. DeAndre Francois was getting no protection from that offensive line, yet he was still able. I mean, you know, we, we could say what we want to about him as the later seasons went on, but in 2016, there was no tougher quarterback I've seen in a long time in Florida State or in college football for him to be able to survive half the crap he went through uh, during that season. I, and I, I feel like 2017, you had his injury in the Alabama game. You have James Blackman, who literally – less than a calendar year before, was playing high school football down here in Belle Glade in Palm Beach County. Um, I think you can attribute it to some of it in, in 2018. I think Francois was not that same Francois we saw 2016. 2019 was just a cluster between, between Blackman underachieving, between Alex Hornibrook not living up to his potential when he came in. So I would say the last two seasons, yes, 2016 and 2017 was god-awful on its line play. But but I really can't I, you can't blame quarterback play. Quarterbacks did damn well those two seasons. Yeah, I think too coaching is, is a big deal. But I mean the offensive line has has been atrocious the last three four three years minimum. Mm -hmm. Atrocious. I mean I can go to bad if we go even more years uh, before that. But um, there has been some some piss poor quarterback play. There's been missed reads. Um, there has been well, when you, when uh, oh, I hate to, I got I don't want to say excuses, but also when you have offensive line play like that, I mean, you kind of start moving out of the pocket too quickly. You don't trust your line that much, so you're already moving. So I think early in his career, Blackman kind of was used to having to move quick. Um, shoot, the rigging running backs had to do that to find a hole. Um, so the, it's, it, it's a deal of both bad quarterback play. Um, I wasn't, I think Hornybrook kind of put himself in a lot of those situations too. Whenever he came into FSU, um, he kind of just ran into the like defensive lineman. Um, I don't kind of know what he was doing for most of the time, actually, um, but best of luck to him and whatever he's doing. But, um, yeah, so there's that. I'm going to answer you a question. Uh, we got a question from Austin Keynes. Uh, who's a 2021 recruit that is either committed or that you guys, Florida State, are targeting that you are excited about? Who are you excited about in 2021? Um, I think I think there's quite a bit to be excited about. I think there's going to be some more guys coming in uh, too in this class. But for me, 
There's a few. So Luke Altmaier is supposedly going to be Mike Norvell's next big quarterback. He's This is the quarterback that he had time to really get ahead on and start recruiting. Um, and obviously he has Shubba Purdy now in this 2020 class along with Tate Runmaker. But those were thing, guys that he had to get on quickly with. He didn't really have much time to analyze. And that were kind of like the last picks you could get that weren't already committed to university. Luke Altmaier is at the lead 11 um, and and – obviously is a talented guy uh, and that's that's a quarterback that I think is going to be your future um, at FSU another guy I'd probably say um, it's a mix in between Brandon Jennings um, he will he would drop down to a four star just a little while ago in the year um, obviously a legacy recruit there but I think he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's a mean guy and he's going to play a little bit of outside linebacker and has some good size on him for what he is, how old he is. And then another one that's kind of flying under the radar that not a lot, a lot of people are talking about. We haven't been able to see him in camps because not a lot has been going on lately. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, Joshua Farmer. Um, he comes uh, in Gadsden County right near over here in Tallahassee. Uh, he is a big cat. Uh, he's been working out a lot. His coaches have been putting out videos of him, and he looks smooth. He looks agile um and he looks like he's going to be a troublemaker and i wouldn't be surprised if he moves up to a four star before he gets to fsu now here's a question we talked about this a little bit before you got on with the the fhsa's decision uh where they basically said counties that don't want to participate don't want to start football camps starting next monday can still play their games later but they won't be eligible for the state tournaments and so far that would include if you're judging by right now that would include Broward County which had St. Thomas Aquinas win a state championship they had a uh, Cardinal Gibbons won a championship either last year or the year before Shaman Madonna uh, you have Leon County I believe Godby played for a championship uh, was that last year or was that a couple of years ago Godby played for the title uh, that was a couple of years ago I believe I think so. and if Dade County pulls out then that's the big horse there I guess my question would be if the FHSA does stay with that ruling. How do you think that will either will how do you think that will hurt those big recruits like the recruits here in South Florida? Or on the opposite side, how do you think that will help smaller recruits? Well, from recruits from smaller counties, guys from like Madison County, uh, Swanee County, Live Oak, places like that. It'll, it'll be interesting. I I think there's so much more to be figured out, but if you're, and I, I mean, you kind of, when you ask that question too, I wonder too about some guys that will maybe not pick to even play if they're not going to be going for a state championship. Some of them need to be playing obviously. So that gives the, the smaller guys a little bit more room to get out there and get their tape out and show it to coaches and whatnot. But if you're not playing for state, I'm under, I wonder if some players will opt not to really play i don't know it's interesting to me because if most of these guys you want to play in those in the in the tournament at the end of the year you, you mean you want to play in the playoffs um and get that state ring and that and that medal but it, it's a tough situation i don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to organize all of this because um, some teams are going to be able to play madison county is one friggin i feel like they've won since like 2010 and won enough um but yeah and it's and I, I something to definitely keep an eye on whenever this whenever they finalize a lot of this stuff. Austin Keynes wants to know the team you dislike more, UF or Miami. We talked about this last August before the two teams played, and, and, and I guess we will just we will we'll reenact that. Logan, who do you hate more, Miami or Florida, and why? Why do you hate one Miami? Team? Okay, why? Miami because uh, their fans are just completely annoying as hell and they act like they're 10 years old whenever they come in Tallahassee and they're just loud and annoying. You can always tell it's Miami fans whenever they're coming into Tallahassee. Like I know Tallahassee, like our college students, like we are just rambunctious and crazy and stuff, but man, those Miami fans, you can hear them from a mile away. If you, if you've ever tailgated around Doak FSU fans, you've definitely heard Miami fans coming down the street and you've heard them about 10 blocks away coming down Pensacola street. Um, before getting the dope, but yeah, and then plus, I just think uh, it's just a more nastier rivalry, just a little bit more um, mean whenever it gets to it on the field. A lot more trash talking. You got guys from down south Florida talking trash. You know, FSU players usually will go down there during their off season, hang out and whatnot. So you know they're already starting and talking crap. So I think it's I think it's just a nastier rivalry for me. 
from a personal level, I've always hated Florida more. And I believe we talked about this before. If you're a Florida State person, it's also where you are from. Uh, I'm from South Florida. Obviously, I'm around a lot more people who are either Miami fans or who went to Miami. So I know people actually go to school at the University of Miami. I know it's a shock. It's amazing. I did not know that. But they actually go to school there. So I'm around them a lot more. Florida fans and Florida alumni tend to think they're more than what they really are. They like to call themselves the Harvard of the South, the Stanford of the East. No, you're a public school in the state of Florida. You're, you're, you're just like UCF, FSU, FIU, FAU. You're a public university. You're very good, but you're a public university. Also, the fact is that they're still living off those titles in three years, in 2006 and 2008. But before that, they've won one title in over 100 years, if you take out those two seasons. They're the New York Jets of college football. They like to talk smack. Their fans like to talk. And they have no relevance. Plus, a lot of their fans are white trash. So. <laughs> Kentron, uh, Redbeard asked a little bit ago about Kentron Porter. I do not have an update on him. Um, I don't know what he'll be doing, actually. Uh, actually, I might. Porter, I believe, is um, he's a wide receiver that actually kind of flew under the radar also, who has some hops, too, with him. He has some bounce. Uh, but uh, I haven't heard much on Quintron Porter. He might be a guy that slips in and might have a couple of, of a little bit of playing time this upcoming season. Uh, but he's got some hops to him. He's, he's got some ball skills that I think right when he committed the video released, uh, it was he's got he's got some good hands and he's got some good eyes. But I think that wide receiver unit right now, Redbeard, is just is loaded with talent. You've got experienced talent. You've got young talent, and I think you've got some guys with chips on their shoulders and things to prove, like Jordan Young. I think Keyshawn Helton obviously should have a little bit more respect, and he should be talked about more. Um, and uh, Ontario Wilson. Uh, Jordan Young I think I'm really excited about. Somebody asked here, how would you rate Norvell's recruiting before Florida State during his time in Memphis? Uh, what would you? How would you rate his recruiting there and whether – and I guess this is my biggest question, and I've said this before, and I said this about Willie Taggart. Recruiting Florida State is not the same as Oregon or, or USF or Western Kentucky. Do you think Mike Norvell is using the same techniques as Memphis, and is that a good thing? Mm, I'm not, I, I have not done a lot of my research. I'll be honest. I don't want to BS anybody and just say things, but I have not done a whole lot of research on how his recruiting went at Memphis. I do know from stuff that we've written – and things that I've learned right off the bat when we were starting to get Mike Norvell is that he's able to develop guys, even though if they're three stars, guys that might not even be listed on a national site. Uh, Kobe Gross, I mean, if we look at it as a Juco guy, uh, he was just ranked uh, coming in as a number two Juco. He wasn't even ranked on 247 just a couple months ago, and that's a tight end coming from California. So I kind of um, understand maybe some concern for some FSU fans and maybe – wondering how the recruiting will go whenever you're going down to a Southeast school in Tallahassee with Florida state. But um, I personally haven't done enough research to really give any kind of good analysis on. It. I just don't want to BS anybody and say things that just crap out of my mouth. Come on, you BS with us every week. So why not? I know. I know. And, I know. and that time I, I don't want to BS people All too right. much. We're going to finish off the overtime session here with our final question from, from what I think might be the greatest name in here, Barth. Barf at 801 said to us, predict all the conference champions. Quick question. We are not doing the Sun Belt or the Mac or anything like that. So we're going to do the five, the Power Five conference champions. So I want you, Logan, give me your Power Five conference champions right now. And if it changes because they go to conference games, we'll deal with that later. But right now, who are your Power Five conference champions? Hmm. Let's see. So what? Uh, okay, so the ACC. Who do you think wins the ACC? Floor. I'm just kidding. Clemson. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I love my uh, yeah, dude. No, okay. Clemson. I haven't drank. I haven't drank enough yet. Okay. Well, so you got Clemson, the ACC, Big Ten. Uh. Are you really the Big Ten? No, no, no. I'm actually doing a little bit of research because I need to – I this is a blown-up question here. Uh, give me Justin Fields. Give me Justin Fields. He's going Ohio State. But he plays yeah. for Ohio State. All right, cool. So, Big 12. Uh, Oklahoma. Okay. Pac-12. Pac I actually like 
what Crystal Ball has at Oregon right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Oregon Ducks. Okay. And finally, that Satan Conference down here in the southeast with us, known as the SEC. I feel like it's gonna be a wild time in the SEC this year. A lot of people saying things about Tennessee, and this is it. This is their back. Rocky Top is here. Nick Saban's pissed yeah. about being in that ball game, wherever the heck he was in Florida, and out of the top ten or whatever they had him at. It was the weirdest thing ever. He's pissed off. They got a stud quarterback coming in. Give me Alabama. Roll, roll. Uh, I'm not going to say it because people no, hate it. Do not say it. Do not say it. Um, I agree with both of you. I think Clemson, um, if their schedule plays out, like I said, I do think they lose to Notre Dame, but I think they come back and beat North Carolina uh, in the ACC championship game. In the Big uh, Ten, I think Ohio State. I think they would have lost to Oregon, but I think right now, I don't think there's anyone else that could get in their way, and I think they beat Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game. Big 12, I think Oklahoma finishes undefeated. I think they beat Texas twice in the regular season and in the Big 12 title game. Uh, out of the Pac-12, I, 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 I hate Oregon because they beat us in the Rose Bowl. They smoked the hell out of us in the Rose Bowl during the inaugural college football playoff. Uh, but I, I will give Mario Christopher credit. I covered him when he was down here at FIU. Great guy, great family. Uh, I don't think they could get past USC. I think USC – would have lost to Alabama, but I don't think there's anybody else that would have gotten in their way. I think they would have beaten Notre Dame at the end of the year, and I think they would have beat Oregon. They would have been my surprise team. I think they would have beat Oregon. And in the SEC, I think you're 100% right. I think Alabama is pissed. They are angry. There is nobody who will beat Alabama. The earliest Alabama loses is the college football player. I think Alabama smokes through the SEC, and I think they smoke Tennessee in the SEC championship game. Okay. Okay. Like you know what we here over the last 16 minutes? We don't need them. Right? No, we don't need them. There was a donation, though, about three minutes ago, four minutes ago, from BGPO Football Funk and said one, uh, $2. He said, do you think FSU has one of the best defenses in the ACC? Absolutely. From what if Coach Adam Fuller is what is kind of not crazy hyped, but – from past experience and what he was kind of able to do in a short stint at Memphis, what he can do develop wise and be just smart and just take it up just a little bit of a notch here in Tallahassee. Florida state does have the potential. They have the, they have the damn talent. I mean, that's without a freaking doubt. I mean, if Florida state would have had a good coaching on the defensive side, a good defensive coordinator the last two years, and you would have been optimi- You would have been crazy out of your mind excited about this Florida State defense. You, were, you would think that you got one of the top five, top ten defenses coming into this upcoming season if it had good coaching on it already. Uh, but this is a rookie coming into Florida State. Not a rookie rookie, but this is a his first year at uh, FSU. Competition is a little bit different. Um, teams still come after you hard, but Florida State has a defensive line. It's got a coach at the linebacker unit that I think is really pro, uh, is really respected across the country uh, as a young coach, and there's actually some actual linebacker size guys there for the first time in a lot of years. And then the DB uh, unit is, is stacked. I mean, and you've got one of the best safeties coming back with Hamza Nashville, Dean, who looks great so far in workouts, along with you know Marvin Wilson. Robert Cooper and Corey Durden, who, you know, is kind of being uh, flying under the radar too, as being one of the best defensive linemen in the ACC. So there shouldn't be any kind of excuse for Florida State to really blow some offenses up this upcoming season. Does Florida State have the talent to have the top defense in the ACC? Absolutely, 100%. But the question is going to be in two areas. Number one, do they have three linebackers who can play if, if Emmett Rice – if Steven Dix Jr., I think need another linebacker who can come in and play that position, I think that that could be fine. And the question is, can the secondary live up? Nazareth is going to be phenomenal. I think he'll be phenomenal. Everyone is loving on, on Asante Samuel. I don't get it. He has a plan to his potential. He's a he's he's hot take, hot take. Hold on. He is talented, but would you say he has played up to the potential when he came in from St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale? 
I think so. I think I think he's been a solid. I think he's been a solid player. I we didn't hear about him at all the last part of the season, and you know why? Because no one was really wanting to throw his way. The one who got abused was Stanford Samuels, who was supposedly supposed to come in and be a higher ranked. Stanford or Asante Samuel Jr. I think is going to be one of the best defensive backs in the country this upcoming season. I said this before even spring started. I think he will be the best. He's got the he's got the edge. He's got the mentality as a as a really good DB like Jalen. Not saying he's on the caliber, but he's got the same mentality I think as Jalen Ramsey, Derwin James, uh, and I think Asante Samuel might be your next trash talking guy that is able to back it up finally. Yeah, that's I think he's gonna be one of the best. Yeah, that is a hot take right there. I think if Asante Samuel can play up to his potential, I think that that defense could be raw. But but this is once again, and this is what we talked about. In a perfect world, Florida State would come out, smoke West Virginia, win convincingly, smoke Sanford, and if they beat Boise State, you're 3-0 before the ACC schedule starts. That would be the perfect world scenario and give them some confidence. If Florida State goes into an ACC schedule where right now your schedule is uh, at NC State, Clemson, Wake Forest at home, at Louisville, that's your first four games. That's going to be the one issue right there. Can you build up that confidence at that point? So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold yet to say, yes, they do have the best defense. I think they have the potential to. Mm -hmm. well, last thing I'll say, last thing I'll say is the only concern for that defense. Two things is the consistency of Janarius Robinson and Joshua Kando. Um, and then obviously the linebacker play and just playing smart, finding your gaps, knowing where to go, where to line up, who's covering who, this all has to go with the defensive coordinator and Chris Marv on actually who's going to cover these slot wide receivers or these tight ends that where these guys shouldn't be left alone wide wide open like it has been the last couple of seasons. It's been brutal to see the amount of guys and the amount of plays that they're lining up on and covering, and it shouldn't even be close to why they're covering them. And they're just putting terrible spots, and that all has to go to coaching. Um, yeah, so that's my that's my con my two concerns for that defense, and that that should be fixed with with the coaching staff. And I think Janaris Robinson and Kendo, it's it's time to click. All their boys, their boys are off to the uh, league. Brian Robinson is setting the stage for them. Time to get it going. So that's all I got to say about it. So just one before we go, you will actually get a babysitter. For next week, if you're forced to, oh, I'll get a babysitter. I'm <laughs> asking if it's gonna, if you're going to be able to, or you have to babysit, or bring your brother on. He can talk Florida State. Yeah, oh. I was about to say you might just need to sit with me, and we'll just do it. Before we go, I do actually want to say two real quick things. Number one, Tim Lenefield, who has written for Seminoles.com for years now, uh, he posted on Twitter this afternoon that he was one of the people let go as due to the COVID-19 cutbacks at Florida State. Tim, we've all read your stuff. You're going to do well. You're going to get back. Someone's going to hire you. Someone's going to get a kick-ass writer. So best of luck to you in that one. And also, I'm going to say something on personal. I do have to say something on a little bit of personal note here. Today would have been the 69th birthday of Robin Williams. Trust me, I'm getting to a point here. It would have been the 69th birthday of Robin Williams, one of the funniest men ever. I know you've seen Aladdin, Logan. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen yeah. him. He's a great comedian. Birdcage is a phenomenal movie. He was a phenomenal actor and whatnot. We all know, obviously, he took his own life. And I say this because we're at a time right now where, where and because I've seen people talking about some of the mental health issues that Ryan Day did at Ohio State, which I salute him for all the stuff that he did up there. Mental health is something serious right now. This is a serious time. There's a lot of people home. A lot of people are working from home. Call your friends. Check on your friends. Make sure everyone's okay. It, it, it's okay to not be okay right now at this point. It's okay to say, I need help. It's okay to talk, call people. It's okay to talk to people. Logan, are you doing okay? I'm doing all right. I've been around you for these many weeks, and somehow I've still been able to get on here with you. I mean, I was being serious and sincere. I mean, we've all had our moments. I've had moments of depression. I'll admit it. I've seen a, a counselor and whatnot. You know, it's, it's good. It's good to talk to people who are smarter than you. Like, when you come talk to me, I'm your counselor. <laughs> there you go. I knew something was going to be there at the end. But, yeah, hopefully Tuesday nights we're always here, so – if you ever need any kind of good distractions or us just being trying to give our two cents on a few things and that's why you come here and hang out with us and chat it up with us or just hit us up on twitter or in the discord 
We love you guys, even the Miami fans, even the Florida fans. We guys, thank you. Hopefully football will be back. Maybe Mark might be back next Tuesday. Who knows? Maybe. He's kind of disappeared there. Yes. I think he should have put it with an FSU helmet or something instead of looking at that damn Ohio State helmet. Yeah. That's a little messed up there. We're leaving us with Thomas Cook's Go Canes. Yeah, I know. I can't believe he left that comment on there for us. But seriously, guys, see you next Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Will Logan show up? That's the question. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college. There we go. I guess we leave the studio. No. <laughs> see, see you, Jason. See you on Tuesday. Later.